Hi, Bob Hughes here with JD Squared. Thanks for watching. Hope you're having a great day. This is another instructional video for the RC6 rotary cutter, and we're going to be talking about the automatic material lifter system, which is this, uh, this system right here. Let me show you what it does here real quick. As the carriage passes over the lifter system, it will automatically raise and lower to prevent a collision. The important thing to note about the lifter system in the RC6 is that it's program independent. A lot of um, machines you actually have to program in the G code for every program where the lifter is so that you can issue the command to raise and lower it. The RC6 doesn't rely on the PC to control the machine. Remember, the PC just talks to our controller. So we're able to tell the machine at a lower level that, hey, there's a lifter here. I'm gonna need you to get out of the way when the carriage passes over. So that's very important. So if you've got hundreds and hundreds of programs, you never have to worry about, did I put the lifter back in the exact right spot? It's completely handled behind the scenes by, uh, by the RC6. That's an important feature right there. So the next question is, why do we even need a lifter in the first place? There's two reasons. Um, the main reason, of course, is to support the tubing so that it could, um, you know, prevent sagging. That's, that's the important thing. So let's just say, for instance, you were going to load up a piece of one-inch round tubing 20 feet long. We're going to start cutting at the far end down there. That means you could have over 19 feet of uh, tubing between the chuck and the tube stabilizer. You're going to get some sag out of that. So in that particular situation, you would place a lifter somewhere around the middle of that section of tubing. Then you'll tell the machine there's a lifter there, and from that point on, it's automatically going to support that tube, preventing the sag. Now, the second thing it could do, not really helping with the sag situation, it's more of a situation where you may want the lifter to help support the weight of the material. So let's say, for instance, we were going to load up a piece of 4x4 four four square tubing in the machine. We've got our square stabilizer in it. We're running out 20 feet. The amount of sag in that particular workpiece isn't going to be great. It's going to be a little bit, but it's not going to be great. In that situation, we would adjust the lifter somewhere near the middle of that also, and we're going to adjust it to basically help support the square tubing. So as the square tubing rotates, the lifter is going to be trying to follow the profile of the tubing, and it's literally just trying to take some of the weight off of the stabilizer system. So that's the two reasons why you would want to put a stabilizer in the machine at all. Let's go ahead and zoom in and take a look at some of the features right here. The material lifter has been completely manufactured out of stainless steel. During the design process, I took into consideration what happens if the carriage system runs into the lifter. Obviously, something may have to give. So I made the decision to make that something the lifter itself because it's very easy to replace these components right here. And if we do have a collision, we would much rather have the lifter bending and no damage occur to the carriage itself because, once again, this is cheaply replaced right here. Having said that, we could probably run the carriage into at full speed and the servos would have time to stop anyway before there was any damage to the carriage. However, we are going to bend up some parts on this here. Now, the reason I built it the way I did was in case that um, situation does occur, don't worry, you're not going to be out of a lot of money because I don't need to make money off you um, warranting parts or something that may have happened or gone wrong. So if you send us a photo of the part that has um, been damaged, we're probably most likely just going to send you one for free anyway. Now, if you do that five or six times in a row, you're going you're gonna to have to cough up a little change to help at least offset the material and labor cost. But we're going to take care of you. We're not, we're not trying to nickel and dime you to death. Let's go ahead and open up and look inside the lifter system. You'll see a pneumatic cylinder in here. It's got a pretty powerful cylinder that will act actuate this thing up or down. And by the way, while I'm talking about actuating up and down, Keep your hands clear of this system when it's going up or down because if it gets a hold of you, it's going to slap the happy right out of you. It will put the dog bite on you. So you want to make sure you're clear. Now it's inside the envelope of the machine. We do have pinch point warning labels on it. 
be careful around these things. They really slap down and up pretty hard. They have to, to carry that kind of weight right there. Now, once again, hooked to the pneumatic cylinder, we have six millimeter or quarter inch um, nylon tubing that will run down and it will pass behind the splash guards and head to the solenoid control system on the rear. If you look right here, this is the cover that we supply that you could place on top of that tubing that will protect it in case you have a piece of material fall down on it. Now, since I mentioned the solenoid in the rear, I should go ahead and mention that the second part of this video will be me showing you how to install the actual hardware. So wait, wait for that right there. All right, the next thing we did on the machine in order to make it relatively easy to adjust to where we, we just basically break one 12 millimeter bolt loose, which uses a 19 millimeter or three quarter inch wrench, we can now easily adjust it to wherever we want the lifter to be, the height, the raised position. We've gone ahead and we supply it with these little brackets with the stainless steel nuts welded on it. And these will prevent the nut from spinning while you're making the adjustments greatly simplifies the job of adjusting it. In fact, um, I literally just did it right there. Now, another thing to note on the lifter system is we designed it for maximum versatility. So this particular adapter plate has a quarter inch rubber hose slot that you can place in and it will lock into position. And that's there to prevent the system itself from scraping up your workpiece, your tubing as you're spinning. Now, the cool thing about the lifter system is we could put in different plates into it. So, for instance, this is a couple other different plates right here that can bolt into the lifter system. And one of the reasons we, wait, sorry, we may want to do that was, let's just say um, we're handling some square tube, and I just grabbed this section from somewhere. We could easily make an adapter plate that the square tubing will roll inside it and all you have to do is kind of make a concave cutout to where it's corner to corner for your tubing right there. So when the tubing is square like this, it will be resting into the, uh, into the opening. And when it's, of course, rotating like this, it'll be doing this right here. Now that's going to help support it. Now this plate, by the way, was not made for this tubing. I just grabbed these. That's why it doesn't quite fit. So those are two important features of the machine. All right, the very next thing we need to do is tell the machine where the lifter is. Let me show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and assume that we just bolted the lifter in at this position. So the machine really doesn't know where it's at. In order to set the position, we first need to lower the lifter because the machine isn't going to do it automatically because once again, it doesn't know where it's at. Now, the way you're going to do that is you're going to go to the control panel we're going to go in the top left corner up here and we're going to select lifter. Then we have a choice of any of the four lifters that we want to individually lower or all of them. I'm just going to go ahead and select all because it really doesn't matter. Now that just dropped the lifter out of the way so that we can move the carriage over it safely. Let me go ahead and we're going to move the carriage until the stabilizer that's the main thing I want to set over the lifter. I definitely want to clear the stabilizer with the lifter is pretty much over the pivot point of the lifter itself. I want to move forward a little bit. Yeah, I like that a lot right there. Now we can go into the control panel and tell it where the lifter is. Let me reposition the camera so you can see the screen a little bit better. This is the control panel. And what I was showing you earlier was this button right over here. If I click lifter, I have the choice of raising and lowering. Now, if we put a checkbox, that means I want you to override the automatic lifter functionality and lower the lifter. Since I selected all, it basically would have lowered all of them. Once again, we only have one lifter in the machine, so I could have just picked lifter one. Now, what we're gonna do to tell the machine where the lifter is, we're gonna go over here to the right menu. We're gonna go down and we're gonna select settings. Let's go over to lifter right here. There'll be four panels, um, one for each lifter, of course. We have lifter one enabled. That's why we have the checkbox right here. It's not checked on lifter um, 
two, three, or four. If I disconnect, if I uncheck that, the machine now no longer thinks it has a lifter and it will therefore um, disregard any information about that lifter so you could run into a crash situation. So if you put a lifter in the machine, always make sure that you tell the machine the lifter's in it and then we're gonna go ahead and tell it where it's at. Now it's very, very simple to tell it where it's at. Below the enable lifter checkbox, there's three positions. The first one is called lifter position. We're gonna to wanna to go ahead and hit this measure button on the far right side and that set it at 28.205 inches. That's where the machine now knows the lifter is located at. Now the two selections below it is the positive dead band and the negative dead band. And what that means is in this range on each side of the lifter position, I want you to make sure that the lifter is in the down position. Now you can do it two ways. You can type in a value, which I did 10 inches, on the positive side, minus 15 inches on the negative. Or you could have gone back into the plasma settings because you can only move the machine on the plasma screen. So after we saved, you got a save button right here. After we save this, we could go back in plasma, move the lifter to the position that we want it to lower. You could come back to the settings screen and then use these measure buttons also. I found it much easier just to type the values in. I typically use 10 in the positive direction, minus 15 in the negative. Now what that means, the positive dead band offset is going down the axis. In other words, the torch is moving away from the machine. You're going in the positive direction on the Y axis. The negative dead band, of course, is what's on this side of the lifter, and therefore you're gonna need a negative number because we have gone in the negative direction. After you've done all this, hit save, and go back to settings and return to plasma. Alrighty, let me move the camera and we'll see if we did it correctly. Now we need to go ahead and verify that the machine knows there's a lifter at this position. The way we're gonna do that, we're gonna to go to our control panel. We're gonna select the lifter button up here. We currently have a check mark beside lifter one because we have overridden the automatic functionality. Therefore, the lifter is in the down position. We're gonna go ahead and click that to put it back into automatic mode. Now, good news, we've passed the first test. The lifter did not raise up on its own, which means the machine knows there's a lifter right there and it didn't raise it. Now as a final test, let's go ahead and move the carriage. And there we go. The machine now knows it has a lifter in it. The next step is to load some material in it and actually adjust the lifter for that. All right, I'm gonna walk down here and put a piece of tubing into the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the chuck right here and I'm gonna give you another tip. I only load tubing about a quarter of an inch into the jaw. Um, the reason I do that is because let's just say you have a perfectly straight piece of pipe and you load it up through the entire length of the chuck. That means you've grabbed the entire length of the jaw. Well, let's just say you have a minute misalignment of the head and I'm talking really small. Let's just say at a foot out, you're only off 10 thousandths of an inch, two and a half millimeters, right? Well, 22 feet down the road, you're off 220 thou, you're off about six millimeters. That's a pretty good amount of distance. So the simple solution is don't grab the whole piece of tubing with the chuck, just grab the outside. That gives us just enough play to where we don't have to worry about having an absolutely perfectly aligned machine. And at the same time, you will not lose any of the orientation or registration of the part. Everything will be fine. I just thought I'd throw that out there to you. All right, we've got the tubing now loaded into it. It is time to adjust the lifter. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna come along and you're gonna break the adjuster bolt that loose. And that's gonna allow you to manually manually override or move the lifter around. Now here's what you're gonna to try to do. 
This particular lifter, I have my favorite adapter plate and it's the one with the rubber hose in it so I don't scratch my tube. And it also doesn't make a lot of noise when she's rotating. What you're gonna wanna do is pull up, see, you see this whole back bracket here sliding? There's a slot right there, it's allowing it to be, to be adjusted. We're gonna pull it up until my rubber hose contacts my workpiece. Now what I'm looking for is I do not want this contact point to be on this side of that pivot. It has to be either directly above it or on this side. So you could put it right there, adjust the adapter plate so it sticks out further. It doesn't matter if it contacts it before it's over, before it's above it, just as long as when it does contact it, there's enough pneumatic force to support the tubing. Now that force is adjustable via a regulator on the back of the machine that comes with the lifter system. So typically though, to be honest with you, we run it in full force all the time, max PSI. But that's, you could adjust that. Now where would you want to change that setting? Let's just say you're handling a piece of square tubing, so you're rolling and you got your corners rolling, right? Well, if you have the lifter adjusted down to a lower setting, PSI, this will ride up and down with the tubing slightly. Remember, you're not trying on square tubing, you're not trying to exactly hold everything square. You're just trying to give it some support in the middle so that the entire weight isn't on the stabilizer or it's not trying to sag. So keep that in mind right there. Anyway, I'm gonna bump it up. I've touched my, my workpiece and now all I gotta do is tighten it down. I'm done. The lifter's in the machine. The machine knows where it's at. It has been adjusted. Let's go ahead, run the carriage down. Everything's looking really, really good. Now, a minute ago I mentioned you could move the adapter plate out further away if you wanted to. There's, there are multiple holes right there to adjust the position. Keep in mind, if you do that, to where it's sticking out further, you may have to reset your negative dead band zone. How much distance on this side of the um, pivot are we gonna retract the deal to account for that extra link that you just did it, or you just put in by extending it out. Pretty much that's it. There's really not a whole lot else to talk about. They're very, very simple systems. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you're looking for more information, you've got an RC6 and you're actually installing the entire lifter, there's another video that will show you the backside of the machine, how to hook up the solenoid, where the uh, air pressure regulator is, how to um, adjust it, everything like that. That's on the backside of the machine. It's all easy peasy stuff. I'll be showing you that in the next video. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate you taking your time out. And as always, JD Square is here for you. Goodbye.